We got the latest read on the economy this morning and economic output actually fell at an annualized rate of 0.2% in the second quarter. That shows signs of a slowing economy and signals that the Bank of Canada's hawkish rate hikes may be starting to take effect. We are joined by Stefan Marion, Chief Economist at National Bank of Canada. Stefan, it's great to talk to you. How much of a surprise is this weakness in the second quarter? I think it surprises everyone. Uh, plus, Andrew, it's the second drop in the past three quarters. So clearly, there's a loss of momentum that's happening a bit faster than we thought. I, I get that some people might blame it uh, partly on, you know, uh, strike activity at the federal government level, Vancouver port. But at the end of the day, listen, uh, it, it does suggest that the interest uh, increase that we've seen over the past year are starting to bite. Here's an interesting number that you highlight, that GDP per capita, which we probably don't talk about enough because um, our growing population can hide lower productivity. Um, GDP per capita fell at an annualized rate of more than 3% in Q2. Yeah, and I think that's a big deal. People don't focus on that a lot, in my opinion. Um, we know we have staggering population growth this year, growing roughly 80,000 per month. Uh, Andrew, in the GTA, it's 20,000 people per month right now. It's oh. three times the historical average. So, yes, you're going to have a big impact on aggregate demand, but the bank account has to take into account at the same time that uh, on a per capita basis, uh, people are actually uh, shedding um, purchasing power, and that's, that's where interest rates are starting to buy. So it's very difficult from a bank account, again, to assess the extent of uh, interest rate bites if you don't account for per capita GDP. Do you think the Bank of Canada is done with interest rate increases for now? I think they're done. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they can't cut rates as quickly as they would have in the past because on a per capita basis decline, you should be uh, reducing interest rates. But again, given the, dem the demographic push, and again, Andrew, what we saw this morning and some of the weakness in GDP is coming from a plunge in uh, residential construction. So with strong population growth, a decline in residential construction, you're going to keep inflation higher for anything related to housing, uh, limiting uh, the ability for the Bank of Canada to lower interest rates. But I do believe that they're done with their hiking. And Tell us about the, the rise in econ, um, employee compensation, because we've heard so much about the tight labor market. Are uh, Canadian workers getting more in their pay packets? I, I think that's the silver lining in this morning's GDP, because if I were to see declining GDP with labor compensation being very weak, I'd be very concerned for the next few quarters, and I think the bank would be forced to cut rates very quickly. Uh, the good news is that labor compensation is still up relatively robustly, um, and your disposable income is also up. So what we're seeing this quarter, and I think people will be happy with this, is consumers are actually reducing the pace of consumption, mm. uh, and they're growing their savings rate uh, in anticipation that the coming quarters, they have to be prepared for a payment shock. So in my opinion, that was a, a good behavior from a consumer standpoint, and it's a silver lining in this morning's GDP. So if it weren't for that, I'd be a, a little bit more concerned, but I'm happy to say that labor compensation is giving support uh, to consumers, and the savings rate is moving higher. And yeah, the saving rate um, has gone higher than the pre-pandemic level? Um, pre-pandemic level, yes, uh, but we're not necessarily, obviously we're not the highs that we saw during the pandemic at 8%. Okay. But I think at 5%, I think we, we are where we want to be at this point in the cycle. Um, this is an interesting number that you also highlight. Housing investment was down just over 2% in the second quarter. Of course, we've got politicians um, trumpeting their policies to increase housing construction. I suppose these things do take months, though, to work their way through. Andrew, they take quarters. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're not going to get a lot of construction in the coming quarters, given the uh, where, where mortgage rates are at this point in time. Uh, I think... One of the highlights of the GDP also is the fourth consecutive quarters of decline in corporate profits. Mm -hmm. That suggests to me that labor markets might be weaker in the months ahead. So again, uh, providing the Bank of Canada uh, with, I guess, the ability or to stay put at this point in time. And, and I do believe there will be rate cuts, but that's a story for next year. Can, can you remind us 
um, corporate profits, are they a leading indicator? Do they turn before the broad economy traditionally? Well, I know politicians don't like to uh, admit it, but you know, without corporate profits, you don't have job creation. So with four consecutive declines, it does suggest weaker labor markets in the months ahead. And that's important. Profits are a key driver of job creation, not the other way around. And that's interesting. Just remind us again, we're seeing slowing growth in household spending. Maybe bad news for Canadian retailers, investors in retail stocks, but that is a definite trend right, right now, consumers retrenching. I think it is, uh, again, uh, rebuilding the savings rate, although I have to say the savings rate is at a more comfortable level. Uh, I would think unless you get a significant deterioration in labor markets, you're probably at your cruise piece for, crude speed for consumption right now. I would say 1.5% makes sense, uh, unlike you know, the surge of 5% that we saw in previous quarters. So uh, I think that sets the stage where consumption is not your big driver of GDP. And that's what you want when you hike interest rates the way we have been doing it over the past year. So, so I think this is, this is good news from the Bank of Canada standpoint. And we have been seeing a sharp rise in the unemployment rate. Yeah, but that's a function of two things. It's like its unemployment rate is rising, but not because of job losses. It's re really because of surging population okay. and people entering the labor force. So the interpretation of the unemployment rate uh, is a bit more difficult, trickier at this point in time, because again, this is unprecedented population growth in the country. Uh, so that needs to be taken with a grain of salt. However, given the drop in corporate profits, I would think that the coming months could show uh, potential job losses. It's interesting how this um, rapid population growth is making your job harder, isn't it? You have to fa well, you have to factor that into any changes in the econometrics. Not just for me, because historically population growth moves at a turtle's pace in terms of how it runs. Now the turtle is running faster than the rabbit, <laughs> so it's not making just my job more difficult. It's also making the bank account of job more difficult, and also policymakers. Leave us with a final thought, though, Stefan. Um, the economy is slowing, but is there signs that we're headed into a, a significant downturn? Not at this point in time. The, the coming the coming months will be very telling. The good news, also, Andrew, is that you know. U.S. economy is holding up uh, relatively nicely at this point in time, but we will be growing slower in the coming quarters. Uh, I'm not so sure that contraction is the norm for the next quarter. I think we could see a slight rebound, but below potential growth, slower growth, slower consumer growth. That's where we are, and I think that is where the Bank of Canada wanted us to be. You want to bring back inflation down? That's where we have to be right now.